Did you know that the most common disease in freshwater aquariums is white spot disease and the death rate is 95% if you do not treat it properly. But don't worry, with this video you will get enough knowledge about the white spot infection and how to treat it. This all depends on knowledge about the life cycle of the parasite and treatment modalities for the parasite. Go through the whole video and grab all the details. That will help you to treat any kind of fish that have white spot infection. The most important thing is if you treat according to the below mentioned steps, the recovery rate will be 100%. We'll talk about the introduction of the disease condition, identify the disease, the life cycle of the parasite, how it affects the fish, signs of the disease, prevention of disease, and treatment modalities of the disease. Before all, we will roll on our intro. Ichthyophthirius multifilius is a relatively large single-celled ciliated protozoan that causes itch or white spot disease. The disease is an opportunistic and commonly appears when fish are weak or stressed. So try to identify why your fish got white spot in the first place. Did you introduce new fish to your aquarium without quarantining them first? Was the fish tank poorly maintained or were there rapid changes in parameters such as pH and temperature? By keeping the water quality high and minimizing sources of stress, you can easily avoid any future outbreaks of white spot. At first, we will talk how to identify and make a correct diagnosis. This disease is a major problem for freshwater aquarists and commercial fish producers worldwide. All species of freshwater fish are considered susceptible, and the parasite has been found in all areas of the world, in both cultured and wild fish. Although large, these parasites do require a microscope to confirm them as a cause of the characteristic white spots that are often seen on the skin and fins of infected fish. I will mention other diseases that have white spots, the size, appearance and affected parts of the body that will lead to a probable diagnosis. Differential diagnosis for white spot are 1. Velvet disease 2. Lymphocytic virus 3 encapsulated worm larvae. The disease is highly contagious and spreads rapidly from one fish to another without the need for additional hosts, which means it will spread through a direct life cycle. Although outbreaks may occur at any time, they often appear when water temperatures are changing more rapidly. Decreases in fish immune function will also favor infection. The disease is particularly severe when fish are crowded. While many protozoans reproduce by simple cell division, which means one parasite splits into two, a single organism can multiply into hundreds of new parasites in one generation, making early detection and treatment of this parasite crucial. The organism is unusual in that it is an obligate parasite, which means that it cannot survive unless live fish are present. Parasite is capable of causing massive mortality within a short time, an outbreak of white spot is a true emergency and requires immediate treatment. If left untreated, this disease may result in 100% mortality. When we talk about life cycle of the parasite, although Ichthyophthirius multifilius has a direct life cycle, which means that no intermediate hosts are included in transmission, the life cycle is complex and has three distinct life stages first. We talk about the trophon stage of the life cycle, which is feeding on the fish. This infection is usually visible as one or several characteristic white spots on the body or fins of the fish. The white spots are single cells called trophons, which feed on host cells, epidermal cells and leukocytes attracted to the site, and may grow to one millimeter in diameter. Because it is covered by the fish's epithelial tissue and mucus, the adult parasite, or trophont stage, is protected from chemical treatments. Once the trophont is mature, it stops feeding leaves the fish and becomes a tumont. Now we talk about the reproducting tumont stage, which is in the environment of the tank setup. The tumont quickly secretes a gelatinous walled outer cyst that allows it to stick to surfaces in the environment. The tumont begins to divide quickly up to 10 times, forming as many new daughter parasites within a single cyst, which are called tomites. This can occur in 18 to 24 hours at warmer water temperatures, near 25 Celsius. The gelatinous wall of the tamont cyst protects it and the daughter tomites from chemical treatment. Therefore, this stage is also not affected by treatments, 
The current discussion is regarding the infective stage of the disease process, which is referred to as Thérant. This phase is considered crucial as it can be treated with both mechanical and chemical treatments. During the process of tomites development, Thérants are formed within the tomont cyst after a period of warm water temperatures, which takes a few days, or cool water temperatures, which could take weeks. The Therons escape from the Tomont cyst and become free-swimming, infective parasites that seek a host fish to complete the parasite's life cycle. As this free-swimming phase is unprotected and highly susceptible to chemicals, treatment protocols should be designed to target this Theront. Now, we will moving on to how it affects fish. The infection challenges host osmo regulation and respiration. Secondary bacterial and fungal infections are common due to the disturbance of epithelial linings. When it affects gills, fish will get hypoxia, and when one observes hypoxic fish with white spots, the ultimate result is death of the fish. Now, let's discuss how to diagnose white spot disease. While disease can be suspected by the typical appearance of white spots on some fish, a diagnosis requires confirmation by identifying the parasite in infected tissue using a compound microscope. If even a single parasite is seen, fish should be medicated immediately, as the fish may not survive as the infection advances, even with treatment. Now, we talk about the infective stage of the disease process, which is called Theront. This is the most important stage of the disease, which we can treat by using mechanical and chemical treatments. The tomites begin to develop and become Theronts within the Tomont cyst, Following days in warm water temperatures, or it will happen in weeks with cool water temperatures, the Therons bore out of the Tomont cyst and become a free-swimming stage, infective parasites in search of a fish host. If we increase the temperature, this treatable stage will come out within few days. Thus, increased temperature we take as a treatment modality. These infective Therons must find a live fish to complete the parasite's life cycle. This free-swimming phase is unprotected, and therefore highly susceptible to chemicals. Treatment protocols should be designed to target this Theron stage. Now we will discuss the disease signs. Anorexia, loss of appetite, increased breathing rate, hyperventilation, discoloration of the body, abnormal behavior in activity, isolation or irritable resting on the bottom, flashing, rubbing and scratching against objects, balance disturbance, upside down, swimming near the surface. The classic sign of this infection is the presence of small white spots on the skin or fins. These spots are caused by the adult parasite, Trophont, penetrating and creating a space in the outer layers of the fish's body surfaces, epithelium, to feed on the fish and move around. These lesions look like small white dots, blisters, or salt grains on the skin or fins of the fish. The white spots may not be as obvious on fish that are white or pale, or if the infection is limited to the gills. By the time the white spots are visible to the naked eye, the infected fish is very sick. Before the appearance of white spots, fish may have shown signs of irritation, flashing, increased mucus, weakness, loss of appetite, and decreased activity. A well-trained aquaculturist or aquarist will detect these changes before the fish's condition worsens and mortalities occur. In my case, my L46 zebra plecos usually show very shy behavior initially. One day, I saw one fish came to an open area and show some abnormal behavior and eating alge on a stone. Next day, there were another four fish show the same behavior. Then I realized this is not normal and took the expert opinions. Clinically diagnosis made as white spot disease and started on cocktail of treatment, which I'll talk one by one later. The second day, following treatments, all colony shows irritable behavior and white spots. If the parasite is only present in the gills, white spots may not be seen at all, but fish will die in large numbers. In these fish, gills will often be pale and very swollen. White spots should never be used as the only means of diagnosis because other diseases may have a similar appearance. Gill and skin biopsies should be collected and examined with a light microscope when the first signs of illness are observed. We will talk about how it affects the fish. The infection challenges hosts osmoregulation and respiration. Secondary bacterial and fungal infections are common due to the disturbance of epithelial linings. When it affects gills, fish will get hypoxia, 
And when you see hypoxic fish with white spots, most probably ultimate end result is death of the fish. Now we are going to make the diagnosis of white spot disease. While parasite can be suspected by the typical appearance of white spots on some fish, a diagnosis requires confirmation by identification of the parasite in infected tissue using a compound microscope. If even a single parasite is seen, fish should be medicated immediately because the fish may not survive as the infection advances, even with treatment. Now we talk about preventive measures of Ichthyophthirius multifilius. Prevention is always preferable than treating to the parasite or any disease after an outbreak is in progress. Preventing the introduction of this parasite is one of the most important reasons. Therefore, all incoming fish should be quarantined at least 14 days before exposed to your aquarium. Transport and handling can cause newly arrived fish who may be asymptomatic carriers, which means those with no obvious clinical signs to break with active disease, serving as a source of infection for other fish, they may come in contact with. At the warm water temperatures required for many aquarium fish, active disease will often become evident one, three weeks after shipping. For this reason, a minimum 30 days quarantine period is recommended for new fish. The importance of this quarantine period for aquaculture or public aquarium facilities cannot be overemphasized. Additionally, because the environmental tamont cyst is sticky, it can easily spread between systems. For this reason, nets, siphon hoses, and other equipment that have not been disinfected should not be shared between tanks, especially in a quarantine area. Similarly, freshwater plants or other structures that may have been exposed to infected fish may carry tamont stages. Parasite may also be spread by aerosolization of water mist or spray, so nearby systems should be watched carefully. Low temperature will cause the inefficient. When it low down below 26 Celsius, most probably it will cause for infection. Thus keeping your aquarium temperature in a static range according to the fish variety. 27 Celsius is a good temperature for all kinds of fish. Keep in mind if your thermostat equipment's not working properly without knowing, aquarium will go for low temperature. And when you see that your fish get white spots at that time, only you realize that your thermostat process have some error. Therefore, daily check your thermostat equipments. Other reason is stress of the fish. When you handle a fish, especially when new shipments of fish, they will undergo fasting periods, much more handling exposed to various aquarium equipments, all above, mention re can cause stress of the fish. Stress will cause reduced immunity of the fish, and they are more prone to infect with opportunistic infections like white spot disease. Poor feeding habits also cause to infect your fish with white spot disease. When you take frozen bloodworms or any other live food with cold temperature, they may introduce the infection to the tank and also reduce the temperature of the aquarium. Live feeding also cause reduce the water quality than dry foods, then it will cause the opportunistic infections like ICH. Infection. In my setup, fish get infection by frozen bloodworms. Irritable behavior is the most prominent feature that made clinical diagnosis of white spot disease. You can see my L46 zebra pleco get irritable behavior and hang on glass and eating algae. Now we talk about general treatment guidelines. This is the basics of treating infection. Once an outbreak of white spot is detected, it is important that a treatment protocol be started immediately. Control of this parasite can be difficult because of its complex life cycle, multiple protected stages, and large number of offspring from a single individual. The role of water temperature in determining the timing of treatment application is also critical and is discussed in more detail below. Of the life stages shown, only the free swimming therons are susceptible to chemical treatment. This means that the application of a single dose of a treatment will only kill therons that have emerged from the tomont cyst and have not yet burrowed into the skin or gills of a host fish. This single treatment dose will not affect organisms that emerge after the chemical has broken down or been flushed from the system. When removing debris, it is important that the debris or water not be discarded on the floor or anywhere that it could spread the parasites to a different tank or system. Any dead fish should be removed as soon as they are seen because mature trophons will quickly abandon a fish once it has died and begin reproducing in the environment. Water temperature has a tremendous influence on how fast the life cycle of each EH is completed. At warm temperatures, 28 to 31 Celsius, the life cycle is completed in about three to six days. 
At these temperatures, chemical treatments should be applied daily and a minimum of three to five treatments are required. At cooler temperatures, the life cycle is prolonged and treatments should be spaced further apart. Fish should be closely watched during recovery because the weakened fish may be susceptible to a secondary bacterial infection. Survivors of a white spot outbreak may also serve as reservoirs of infection. The immune system has been able to fight and control the parasite numbers enough that the fish will not show any clinical signs even if they have a lower level infection. However, they may be capable of spreading infection to other fish that have not been previously exposed to the disease. Chemical treatment options are the best way to treat the infection. The choice of chemical used to treat white spot disease will be based upon water quality conditions, species of fish to be treated, and the type of system in which the fish are housed. In general, copper sulfate and formalin are both effective against parasite when applied at the correct dose in a repetitive manner as described above. Increased salinity can also be effective. We talk about the one option that we use for disease is copper sulfate. The chemical is effective and relatively inexpensive. An important consideration when large volumes of water are treated. However, it can also be used in smaller aquarium systems. The disadvantage of copper sulfate is that it is extremely toxic, particularly in water of low alkalinity. Never use copper sulfate without first testing the total alkalinity of the water carefully measuring the dimensions of the system to be treated and weighing the amount of chemical to be applied. I never use copper sulfate for my aquarium. Then we look at the use of formalin as a treatment. If fish are maintained in a tank system, formalin is often used to treat white spot disease. Formalin is not the ideal treatment for ponds, but it works well in tanks. Vigorous aeration should be supplied during chemical treatments, especially if gills have been damaged. Formalin is usually applied at a concentration of 25 mg per liter of system water. For formalin sensitive species, a half dose may be used. In my tank, I use the chemical mixture for the treatment. I'll talk about it later. Now we talk about how to adjusting salinity. A slight increase in salinity can help decrease osmoregulatory stress caused by the damage this parasite causes to the external tissues of the fish. At warmer water temperatures, use a 4 rho 5 grams per liter of salt, sodium chloride. In a prolonged bath for 7 to 10 days is another effective treatment in smaller systems, provided the fish species can handle the increased salt concentration. Because the ronts are intolerant to increased salinity levels, salt is often added to aquaria or tanks that are being treated with formalin to enhance the response to treatment. Most freshwater fish can tolerate five parts per trillion salinity for several weeks, and many can live in three parts per trillion permanently. However, it is important to know the specific tolerances for each species to be treated. Plants in an aquarium or small ornamental pond may not tolerate increased salinity. In my tank, I use salt two grams per liter. Without any issues, my zebra pleco can tolerate that amount. Then we will talk about temperature, making the tank temperature up to 30 to 31 Celsius. It should be constant until the chemical treatment ends. With high temperatures, environmental oxygen dissolving capacity in the aquarium will reduce, therefore increasing the aeration rate of the tank. Put an extra air stone with a good rate of air through it. In my tank, I make sure that the temperature constantly maintains 31 Celsius, and it is really warm water, but my fish doing well with that temperature with extra aeration. Now we talk about the light period of the aquarium. Aquarium light should be on for 24 hours until the chemical treatment ends. Photo period of the aquarium will reduce the rate of reproduction of the parasite. In my aquarium, you can see I use warm daylight. I continue it 24 hours into seven days. Now we talk about using a standard mixture of chemicals as a single product, though it is not environmentally friendly. Most effective chemical treatment modality is to use the correct mixture of the below chemicals. They are formalin and malachite green. Malachite green has mercury, thus we should use it with cautions. The recommended correct dose should be used according to the volume and decorations of the aquarium. Dose also depends that the fish have scales or not. Overdose can kill all living creatures in the system. I use NT Labs products which contain a standard mixture of the above chemicals and instructions are well stipulated as a note. Keep in mind I did not do any water changes until day 7 of the treatment. 
If you continue water changes while on treatment, bioavailability of the medications does not reach the therapeutic dose in the aquarium. Thus adhere to the instructions that mention for use of the medication. Now we talk about medically important food for treating white spots. It has been proven that some algae or vegetarian products have some chemicals that excrete from the skin and it will dislodge the parasite from the skin. Dr. Basilar Martin is the recommended fish food by experts for white spot fish. In my Zebra Pleco tank, I use daily Dr. Basilar's Martin food for better results and it works for me. In my setup, I have L46 Zebra Pleco and Galaxy Rasbora, but all L46 get the infection. And with above multidisciplinary treatment, Apparach gets all L46 recover at the day seven of the treatments. This is the whole story that I treat my L46 Zebra Pleco, who have white spot infection, with 100% recovery rate. My all phase get rid of infection. Important fact is, L46 Zebra Pleco is a scale less fish and all have full-blown infection. With good management protocols, all fish get recover from the disease. Thank you for joining with Serendib Aquatics. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to comment below. I'll try to reply to all comments. You can share your knowledge with others about white spot disease by putting a comment about your experiences. Serendib Aquatics will see you in our next fish video about killer fish breeding as soon as possible. Hang on with Serendib Aquatics. If you think this will help you with your aquarium journey, Please be kind enough to subscribe Serendib Aquatic YouTube channel for new updates.